Thank you, Mr. Chairman, or Mr. Speaker, and members. Um, I have filed an amendment to strike the enacting clause so that I and a couple of other members could have the floor for a few minutes and, and talk to you about how the debate today feels. I know you see a bunch of us dressed in black around the floor. Some of us have black ties. Some of us, uh, like Chairwoman Alvarado, has a black outfit. We're, we're doing this uh, as a form of protest against this bill. Because I, I got to tell you that for me and the, and the crying women and children that were outside this chamber at the press conference today, this feels incredibly disrespectful of a lot of people in our state. And this bill and the premise of this bill is, is built on a series of lies that have been told to you by a number of different people. When the governor came on this House floor to deliver his State of the State speech, he suggested that this bill was designed to force local governments to enforce ICE detainers. And the chairman has already told us it's not about ICE detainers. Everybody in the state is complying with ICE detainers. In fact, when the Texas Tribune did its study of ICE detainers in the state of Texas, it was determined that over 99% of all ICE detainers were complied with in this state. So we know it's not about that. Texas, in fact, in talking to the former ICE director in the last administration said, Texas is the best at complying with ICE detainers of all of the 50 states. There was no problem with Texas, in her opinion. So if that's not the real motivation for this bill, then why are we bringing it to the floor? And not just bringing it to the floor, blasting it to the floor. This thing spent less than an hour in cal calendars. We don't control that. The Latinos on the House floor don't control that. You all control that. And you have to see this in our context, in the way we are receiving this information, these actions. You have to see it in a broader context. You have to see it in that context that in 2011, there were photo ID bills and redistricting bills that now have been ruled six times by federal courts, not just to have discriminatory impact, but discriminatory intent. That's not saying, well, we passed the bill and oops, I'm sorry it hurt Latinos or African Americans. It's that we passed the bill with the intention to do that. And that's not us saying it. That is six different federal court decisions with Republican appointees and Democratic appointees. In 2011, that same year, Latinos became the majority in Texas public schools. It shows what the future is gonna look like in this state. And I know it was a tough budget year, but we cut a historic amount from public education that same year. And in light of this context, it doesn't feel like a coincidence. Because there's this sense that those are not our kids, that they're, they're, they're some other. In, later on in this decade, State Board of Education, I know that's not you guys, but it's an elected body tries to completely eliminate our history in the textbooks and in the curriculum standards. Cesar Chavez is removed. Thurgood Marshall is removed. And then you guys come with this bill. In light of that entire context, how are we supposed to swallow this? How are we supposed to understand this? Mr. Speaker. And everybody, and everybody says, Lucio, hey, it's not me. When he's ready with a gentleman, you. Everybody says it's not me. I didn't intend to do this. I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a racist. But it, it's not really hard to connect the dots on this series of events since 2011. And so when all the Mexican-American legislative chairs, except for two, send a letter to the speaker saying, please don't bring this to the floor. When the Mexican-American Legislative Caucus goes to the speaker and says, please don't bring this to the floor, it feels very disrespectful to all of us because it's not about ICE detainers. It's not about that, guys. Even Charlie said, ICE has access to every county in this state. What was really troubling during the state of the state is the governor came here 
and told us, he wanted to scare all of us. He said that we, our counties and our municipalities are letting dangerous criminals out on the streets. And he cited the Rios case. Horrible criminal, bad guy. Hispanic guy who had committed a terrible crime. And he suggested that this bill would fix that. Well, Rios was deported three times. You don't get deported by a sheriff. You don't get deported by a constable. You don't get deported by a police chief. You get deported by ICE. And the Dallas Morning News pointed out that lie that the governor fed us on the House floor. Then later on, the governor tried to suggest that Tra Travis County was not communicating with ICE. Austin American State, no, PolitiFact looked at it and said it was completely false. That claim by the governor was completely false. So if the governor wants to mislead us on this House floor, wants to lie about the need for this bill, and it's being fed to us as a way to keep our community safe, then why are we ignoring all of law enforcement that said this bill will make us less safe? So if it's not about ICE detainers, it's not about violent criminals, it's not about law enforcement, it feels like it's about something else. And I know people have come up to me and said, hey, I don't like this bill, but I have to vote for it because it's, it's a Republican primary. Some of, some of you have told me that, yes, sir. Many. And I would say to those people that this pattern of discrimination, when we look back in the history books and when our children study this time, they're going to look at those six court decisions. They're going to look at bills like this. And they're going to judge this body and the leadership here about what its record looks like. And I would say it's not a very pretty record. And I don't know how to synthesize this, how to consume this in any other way if it's not about all those other things that say, that people say it's about. Then I ask you, what is it about? When we stood out there earlier today and I saw children crying, the same children who were out here handing you notes, asking you to vote against this, I saw mothers trembling. If you have succeeded in anything, Members, you have succeeded in terrifying an entire community. Kids aren't going to school. Victims of domestic abuse are not, are not reporting their crimes. Victims of rape are not re reporting to the rape hotline, as Chief Art Acevedo said. And that doesn't make our community safer. That makes our communities more vulnerable. And people are scared. This is not theatric. Some of you have also suggested to me that, hey, we have to put on a show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a show. This is not a show. These are people's lives. And whether documented or not, this type of rhetoric from the federal level and President Trump and then from the governor, where we are called rapists, we are called criminals, it is suggested that Latinos don't send, Latino countries don't send their best here. Well, I'm the son of immigrants. And I love this country. But when my mother came here, Mexico sent her best. And I know there are a lot of people who feel that way behind me. So members, if we're not patting you on the back today, and we don't want to be very friendly, I think you know why. Because this feels like a dark day in the House. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Lucio, for what purpose? I also come to order. Mr. Lucio, for what purpose?